Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about Placenta Previa. Placenta Previa is a condition in which the placenta lies abnormally low in the uterus. Its position is either closer to the cervix or it covers the internal os of the cervix. Causes of Placenta Previa include a previous caesarean delivery, a previous c-section which increases the chances of placenta previa. Multiple pregnancies can also increase the risk, a previous history of placenta previa, maternal age which includes women over 35 years old, the risk is higher in women over 35 years old. Smoking can also increase the risk of developing placenta previa. A previous uterine surgery such as fibroid removal and in vitro fertilization can also increase the risk of developing placenta previa. A placenta previa is more commonly identified during 18 to 20 weeks or even 22 weeks. However, some cases such as a low-lying placenta or even a marginal placenta previa can resolve by the third trimester around 32 weeks because the uterus grows which leads to migration of the placenta away from the cervix. If a placenta previa is suspected earlier in pregnancy, a follow-up is performed at around 28 to 32 weeks to see if the placenta has migrated away from the cervix. In few cases, if the placenta hasn't moved away from the cervix by 32 weeks, it is still possible for the placenta to move away from the cervix by 36 or 37 weeks. These cases usually include a low-lying placenta or a marginal placenta, which can resolve in the third trimester. However, if placenta previa is still seen during the third trimester, it is more likely to continue till the end of pregnancy and it requires special management. Now we will compare the image of a normal pregnancy with an image of low-lying placenta. In a low-lying placenta, the placental edge is less than 2 cm from the internal os. The image on the left is of a normal pregnancy without placenta previa or a low-lying placenta. The image is in longitudinal plane. It is a transabdominal approach. This is the cervix. The junction between the cervix and the body of the uterus is the internal os. In a pregnant uterus, this will be seen surrounded by amniotic fluid, which will be anechoic. In the longitudinal plane, this central point of the cervix will be the internal os. Basically, it is the upper edge of the cervix. So we will look at this area, the region near the internal os, to check for a low-lying placenta or placenta previa. Here we cannot see the placenta near the internal os. We can only see amniotic fluid and the fetus. In this image, however, we can see the placenta near the cervix. This hyperechoic structure is the placenta and this is the placental edge. We have to measure the distance between the placental edge and the internal os. This is the cervix and at this point is the internal loss. You can measure this distance. If it is 2 centimeters or less, 
it is considered a low-lying placenta. This is another image of a low-lying placenta. You can see that the placental edge is near the cervix. And this point, this central point of the cervix will be the internal loss. And you can place the calipers in this manner and measure this distance. If it is 2 centimeters or less, it will be considered a low-lying placenta. Here is another image showing a low-lying placenta. The internal loss is at this point and this point is the placental edge. So this distance will be measured. In this case, the distance was less than 2 centimeters. So this was considered a low-lying placenta. These are transvaginal images in longitudinal plane. The image on the left shows a normal pregnancy focusing on the cervix and the internal loss. No placenta is present near the internal loss. This central point of the cervix is the internal loss and it is surrounded by clear amniotic fluid and some fetal parts. No placenta is seen here. In this image, however, we can see the placenta. This hyperechoic structure is the placenta. This is the placental edge. And over here is the internal loss. So you will measure this distance. This was also less than 2 centimeters. It was considered a low-lying placenta. The next type of placenta previa is marginal placenta previa. In a marginal placenta previa, the placental edge touches the margin of the cervix, but it does not come in contact with the internal loss. It is just very near to the internal loss. The placenta in this image is very very near but it does not cover the internal loss. So this will be considered a marginal placenta previa. This is another case of a marginal placenta previa. The placenta is in contact with the cervix and it is very very near to the internal loss. It almost touches the internal loss. So this is a marginal placenta previa. Here is another case of a marginal placenta previa. The placental edge is very near to the internal os. This was also a case of marginal placenta previa. The placental edge is in contact with the cervix. However, it still does not cover the internal os. So we will declare it as a marginal placenta previa. This is a transvaginal image showing a marginal placenta previa. This is the cervix and this point is the internal os. This is the placenta. The placental edge is very near but does not cover the internal os. So this will be a marginal placenta previa. Here is another transvaginal image showing a marginal placenta previa. It is very near to the internal loss, which is at this point, but it does not cover the internal loss. So that is why it is called a marginal placenta previa. The next type is partial placenta previa. In a partial placenta previa, part of the placenta will cover the internal os, but it will still not completely cover the internal os. That is why we call it partial placenta previa. This is the cervix and the internal os is at this point. 
the placenta is covering the internal loss but not completely not as much as a complete placenta previa so when a small section of the placenta covers the os it is called a partial placenta previa in this image you can see that the placenta is covering the internal loss it is overlying the internal loss at this point when a small part of the placenta covers the internal loss it is called a partial placenta previa in a complete placenta previa the placenta completely covers the internal loss of the cervix this entire structure is the placenta and you can see it is completely covering the internal loss so this will be a complete placenta previa this is the center of the placenta if the center of the placenta is not overlying the internal loss it is considered asymmetric it is an asymmetric complete placenta previa if the center of the placenta reaches the internal loss it is considered a symmetrical complete placenta previa this point was the center of the placenta the placenta is not fully visualized in this image otherwise you will be able to see that this point was the center of the placenta it is overlying the cervix in this manner in a somewhat crescentic shape so this was a symmetrical placenta previa symmetrical complete placenta previa in this image you can see the complete placenta this is the entire placenta and this point is half of the placenta so this is the central point of this placenta it is overlying the internal loss which is at this point this is the cervix so we label this as a symmetrical complete placenta previa this is a case of complete placenta previa the entire placenta is completely covering the internal loss of the cervix this image shows a symmetrical complete placenta previa the center of the placenta is in contact with the internal loss which is at this point over the cervix this is a transvaginal image showing a complete asymmetric placenta previa the placenta completely overlies the internal loss but the central portion of the placenta is not in contact with the internal loss so this will be considered an asymmetric complete placenta previa thank you so much for watching please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos